had like all the assassins on it, but front and center was still Ezio. But we hadn't had, mm. like you said, we haven't had a game with him for so long, but he's still the poster boy. Has that at all mm. been some sort of uh, uh, concern to try to create another, not create another Ezio, like carbon copy the character, but another character that is as iconic? Has that been a goal? Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, uh, like, I think every person that makes games like every team that makes games wants their character to be super iconic like to the point where they'll often name parts of that character's attire an iconic something or other <laughs> yeah. but like i think that's definitely i think that's definitely the goal for anyone that sets out to make a game you want that main character to be like just the thing that seals the deal for everybody um and for sure like i know i i mean i've been a part of discussions where it's, where we're talking about the new assassin, right? And like how and it's funny because even internally we always measure them against Ezio. Yeah. Like how is this character going to measure up to Ezio? Like what qualities do they share with Ezio? What makes them different from Ezio? Why is this not just another Ezio, right? Like it's he's definitely in those conversations that I have been a part of, which admittedly occur much, much later in the in the game's actual development, right? Like, um, I don't want to say that, like, writers are, like, coming to uh, the community managers and saying, like, well, what should we make our game about? <laughs> like, that's definitely not, that's definitely not happening. Like, um, but, uh, but yeah, no, for sure. Like, I know that uh, it, it is, a, it is, a, it is a constant thing. And so that's why I think, I think it's, it's trying to figure out what it was that made Ezio so appealing, too. I mean, you'll notice with uh, Arno is very flippant and very like, uh, like clever with his, with his like little witty remarks and things that he says to people all the time. Um, but it seems clear that that's not 100% what made Ezio like such a memorable character because Arno is not memorable in the same way that Ezio is memorable. Right, like I don't think I'm yeah. breaking any rules to, to no. admit to that. No, no, I don't, I don't think <laughs> and it's so. Certainly, and it's certainly not because of the performances either, because Dan Genot's performance as Arno is phenomenal. I really, really like it. Like, and I, I've met Dan Genot, and he's an excellent actor, and he does a fantastic job. So it's like there's just some strange alchemy, and I think that it's not even just for Assassin's Creed, but for a lot of different games, are looking for a character that has just that right. Uh, degree of charisma and cleverness and vulnerability and you know has this like broad arc to try and to try and hit that to make their character really really uh, engaging right um, which is funny because I I was gonna ask you guys why are why your podcast is called the Kill Kill Connor podcast <laughs> James do you want to take this one <laughs> yeah uh, well. Uh, essentially, we want to get together a hate mob to go <laughs> and attack Connor. No, um, no, ge genuinely though, the reason it's called that is because the first ever time we streamed, me, Tyler, and someone who used to be one of the hosts, uh, the Gaming Sheep, Joe, we did um, a live stream uh, for Unity um, ages ago. Um, and we were just talking about different characters, what we liked, what we didn't like. And Tyler was like going off on one hating on Connor. And then someone commented, Kill Connor Club. And we were just like, uh, it kind of got brought up at the end. Like everyone was hashtagging it on Twitter and stuff. And, we, and Tyler was just kind of like, well, if we ever do a regular podcast, that's what we'll name it. And we just went with it. <laughs> just a community joke. Like we don't actually hate Connor that much. It's just our least favorite, I yeah. think. It's because, you know, like I say it a lot. I'm like, well, it's, it's a video game character. I'm not like losing sleep over, you know, Assassin's <laughs> Connor in Assassin's Creed <laughs> 3, like waking up like, son of a bitch. Like <laughs> that doesn't happen to me. But, but just, it's a funny joke. And I mean, I think, what was the specific story, James, in the, in the live stream? Because there was the rumors that Connor was going to be in Unity because the timelines oh, yeah. matched up, yeah, and I, right. I, I, one of my friends had said to me, um, and I brought this up in the podcast that what if uh, Connor tried to kill Elise because she's a Templar, and then Arno killed Connor, and then I'd be like, wow. oh, that would be amazing, best Assassin's Creed ever, <laughs> or, um, greatest moment of all time, uh, and then the Kill Connor Club hashtag got brought up by somebody and then it just kind of went from there like wildfire and then it's just a funny name it kind of clicks I'm like yeah it's cool <laughs> so that's the origin story <laughs> I see I see I see because personally Connor's I, I really like Connor I think 
Like one of the things. Here's one thing about Connor. If you didn't play the Homestead, then he's a terrible character. But like, because the Homestead is the only place where he can actually like relax and be himself. Kind of, kind of an okay dude. Yeah. 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 I mean, all the other time he's just totally single-minded about finding Charles Lee, and that's all he wants to do. Is <laughs> Find Charles Lee and like kill like eighty thousand redcoats yeah. at once in New York on yeah. the street. Yeah. Um, um, so so yeah, I can see why people don't. <laughs> yeah. Don't react to it. No, I pl- I played the Homestead missions and I liked them, but surely that's worrying that you have to play the Homestead missions to like a character. Like yeah, th- there weren't Ezio Homestead missions. <laughs> like we liked him anyway. It's so true. It's so- Although I will say the Christina side missions in Brotherhood oh, were get me every time. Oh, oh get me every right. Time. Like- <laughs> <laughs> I just mention him and I'm just like boom, tears right now. Cry. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, with the, like you said, the Homestead, because we just had Aftermath, we just had Nick on the podcast in the last episode, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, he said the exact same thing, he goes, but the Homestead missions, and I'm like, yeah, I've played them, like, I mean, <laughs> I've 100%ed every Assassin's Creed game, all the achievements, yeah. like, I, I, even whether I, whether it's my favourite or not, I'm still doing that, like, I have to. Uh, but uh of course yeah but and the homestead missions were my favorite part and also maybe the naval missions as well which is why i love oh, black yeah. flag phenomenal you know that naval gameplay is phenomenal but yeah mm. i'm like yeah yeah but the rest of the game <laughs> he's i think my comparison is hayden christensen in the star wars prequels Oh, Anakin, that's oh. always my <laughs> comparison to. Ah, oh, ah. I'm right with the heart, that one. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, that's rough. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fair. I mean, you know, is Connor? Connor isn't a character for everyone. I think that's the other thing too. Is he's not especially likable. Um, yeah. But it's funny because, like, for me, that's part of what I like about him. He's got like some like weird like social anxiety going on, and I like that. <laughs> he's definitely complicated, certainly certainly complicated yeah, and he has moments sure. like he's not like it, it's i can play assassin's creed 3 i'm not gonna be like oh no really not that yeah i can <laughs> because because you told me something. what did i tell you what did i tell you let's 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 have this conversation right now <laughs> you did you did say before you were like oh well because mm, because we were talking about because obviously your least favorite is ac3 my least favorite is unity and yeah. i was talking about like like I was like, oh, you know, because you were like, you can play Unity, you, I and can, I was like, but I, I, can I can't do that, and you were like, yeah, but I'm like that with AC3. Yeah, like, but I'm not like, that. I'm not. But yeah, I'm not. I didn't break discs, man. Like, I'm let's doing... not talk about Unity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I actually wanted to um, bring something up. Like, this is backtracking a little bit, but I was. It's been playing on my mind. Um, yeah. Why is it the Ezio trilogy is called the Ezio trilogy, and the Kenway saga is called the Kenway saga? Because didn't that have three games as well? Hmm. That is a good question. I think because they figured that Saga sounded cooler. And honestly, was there a chance right. there was going to be more than three <laughs> originally? Uh, they thought they came my Saga as soon as four got announced. It was like it's a Saga. I'm like, oh okay. I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't think so. Because like, the Kenway Saga is considered to be AC three, AC four, and then and then Rogue. Yeah, mm. is it because the different that... characters you play as? Well, yeah. So there's yeah, because it's because it's Connor and then Edward and then also hate them, right? So mm. I think that could that could be part of it too. Because it, like, mm. in that case, it's three games, not three like parts of a story, right? Like yeah, Ezio's three games yeah. are, and and they, and they go in order, right? Like Ezio's games go, he's born. And then grows up to be to start being assassin, becomes a leader of an assa- of the assassins in Brotherhood, and then um, retires from assassins, assassinating in uh, in assassinating. Uh, Revelation. So well, now you so get to a... play those games, everyone. They just <laughs> ruined it. Spoil, spoil, spoil it on the kill console. <laughs> Getting middle end. There you go. <laughs> totally spoiled. I mean, in my defense, those games are like five years old. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah you Trust me, we never give spoiler yeah. warnings ever on this. We talk about everything. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah so whereas the Kenway saga is all out of uh it's not it's not chronological it doesn't start at the beginning and mm. then go to the end it involves like a bunch of different people um who m- most of which are playable at least in the Kenway line um and uh and yeah i think 
why do I feel like Rogue is not the right one to I think be it in? Is. Yeah. It's just because it you don't like, play as like hey, during. Yeah, yeah, you're not you're yeah. playing as you're you're not play you're not playing as a Kenway. That's what's weird about it. You're not, it. but it's kind of it's that bridge between AC four and AC three. Like it's the kind of like a prequel to AC three. Yeah. I think that's kind and of it, and it tells Hathen's story with that because you can't play as Hathen because he's already conceived Connor, so there's no way you could oh, relive yeah. Hathen's memories at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the best way it yeah. could happen, which makes sense. I mean, I would have loved to have played as Hathen um, in his own game, but it's kind of had to be that way, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we've solved, we've solved the problem then. There we go. We got it. <laughs> whenever, whenever, though, the Ezio trilogy gets brought up, and I just wanted to ask you, I'm not going to ask you any specifics in terms of can you tell me the answers, but more of the question of what what are your thoughts on that topic and that is my obsession for the box 